Welcome to the Late Break Show Car Caves. This is a new series where I go and investigate and have a good poke around people's collections of cars or maybe a den where they've got certain machines and I get behind the skin of why have people got what they've got, especially when they've got eclectic stuff. This is our very first episode. These are proudly sponsored by EBC Brakes and there is a discount code for Late Break Show viewers that I will put down below and in the description. My first one is a chap called Richard and he lives in Nottinghamshire. You can already see he's got something quite odd. We've got an ex-ambulance Land Rover Defender and this is an industrial unit, not a glamorous garage. But what lies beneath? Let's have a look. It's a Vespa next to a toilet. Richard. Hi there, Johnny. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing? Yes, doing very well, thank you. This is all good. Posters yes. of Porsches, <laughs> Vespa's next to the toilet and the reception. Yeah. It's uh, my brother's, uh, he keeps it here, it gets in the way a bit, but it does look quite cool. It's a pretty thing to get in yeah. the way. Oh, I can see some cars. Come on in, yeah. Let's go and have a look. Come on in. This is going to be a den, I can tell. A car den. The first thing I, I, I want to say is, when you sent me details of your, your, your cars and your vehicles, really quite an eclectic mix, because you, up until quite recently, you had a Fiat Panda four-wheel drive. They uh -huh. look beautiful, by the way. Yeah. You're upset you sold that. Yes, sold that, sorry about that. Um, yeah. And a Carver, uh -huh. which, well, tell us about the, those two. I mean, not the kind of cars you'd expect next to Lamborghinis and Spikers and... No, well, for me, it's about different driving experiences. And I think, I think, I mean, something like that can put a smile on your, your face just as, just as much as that. So yes, yeah, so it's just, it's variety, that's what I like. What started the journey? What was the first thing in the cave? Uh, probably this one, probably the 911. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I always, I always wanted one of these. Um, I remember, on a school bus once on um looking out the window and one of these pulled up at the traffic lights and the, and the spoiler at the back dropped down and i thought that, that, you know, that's the best thing i've ever seen can you talk to me about the spec because i yeah it's a 964 right uh-huh yeah so it's a, a 1990 it didn't look like this when i got it didn't it so it's totally original standard it was linen gray which is more like a gold yeah uh, it was narrow bodied yeah. Uh, um, and I bought it in 2013, I think it was. Okay. Um, so not long after Singer started, you know, doing their bit. Yeah, of, yeah. They because would've... they were they were pretty much unloved the 964s. Which uh, is was... weird when you think about yeah. it now, because uh, it's still one of my favourites. The 9 the 964 yeah. is the one that nearly sort of ended it for Porsche, isn't it? It did. It did. But um, for me, it's just got that nice balance of uh, modern and, and classic. Yeah. Not going too classic and not going too modern. So these wheels are actually Singer wheels. So I tracked down the company that made them. I think they're in Canada. And I had them made and shipped over. Yeah. The biggest compliment I can get is, oh, which, which model is that then? Yeah. So it's a right hand drive car. Uh-huh. And is it, what, what is it? Is it Carrera? So it's a, a C2. C2, so yeah. So a C2 manual, so rear wheel drive. Yeah. Um, Damn it, what a lovely speed thing. manual. I mean, it's got seats from a 997. Is it unlocked? Yep. Um, They're from a 997? Yeah, 997. Have them all retrimmed, obviously. Oh my gosh, um, this is really, really quite tasteful. You mean, it all started with the Mini. That Mini was my first car, classic Mini. Right. Um, I was 15 at the time. Uh, desperate to get a car, um, one that I could get and do up, yeah. customise it, do everything I wanted with it. Yeah. So I, I worked in a supermarket stacking shelves for two or three years, saving up furiously, um, managed to get one. And uh, yeah, the, the funny thing is that um, it was a silver 1986 Mayfair, uh, so the plush velour interior, it was yeah. a posh one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I got some nice wheels, wheel arches, and you know, I spent you know, some, some nice summers working on that. Well, we, we, we've got to talk about the Mini. You saying that your first car was a Mini, you've obviously, this is where your car journey began with one of these. 
Yeah, but, but, so obviously working with a, in a supermarket, I couldn't create my ultimate vision. Um, wow. Um, so, and with it being in 2019, the 60th anniversary of the Mini, uh, it got me thinking about them again and thinking, and the prices of them going up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously getting rarer and rarer, basically. So is this like, because it's sitting next to the 911, and I'm thinking this is a, a similar vision like the 911, you bought the car and you had a bit of a plan for how to put your own mark on it. Yeah. I mean, just looking at the pictures that you, you emailed before I came here, I mean, the interior and the, the detail of this thing absolutely blew me away. I've got to say, right at the top of this, there are a lot of modified minis that I look at and I go, yeah, it's not really my bag. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the, this, is like a, this is like a Singer Mini. So what is this? What what did this start as? So with this, so this was a 2000 uh, Cooper Sport. Oh, it's just one of the last. Yeah, so one of the last ones. Okay, yeah. so you, it totally fooled me because when I it's got the old grill. Old yeah, badging. so it's had the Mark One conversion to the front and back. Yeah. Um, which, wow. which I'm quite a fan of. I mean, this is that's the original born. Oh, the, this boot. is this yeah. is your mood board for the original <laughs> one. Yeah. So I kept some bits of it. Just I thought I might make a nice wall. Yeah. Uh, display. Uh, so it was originally a British Racing Green uh, Cooper Sport. Yeah. But like I say, it's um, uh, each panel was just a slightly different shade. So yeah. it, it, it was a perfect one really to, to make all these modifications to and not upset too many people that it's not original. And uh, that's that's how it all came together. And this is a, an original 1959 colour. Um, is it? Yeah, fr Farina Grey. Okay. Uh, Willow Green Roof. I mean, these were, these were my mock-ups that I did on computer before. I oh, okay. Um, this is all Photoshop? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. But that, that's the good thing about when you're creating something like this. You've got the ideas and then you've got to work out how to do them. Yeah. And then you get to meet all these different people and industries and... Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the control panel there, I, did, I kind of designed that and... There's just a guy that makes those. That, that's <laughs> I found a guy that makes those and, and I asked him to, to do that together for us. That's probably the most tasteful classic mini dash I've seen. And there they are, yeah. you've got your stopwatches and the shifter with the exposed yeah. mechanism. So I, I sourced that from a company in Germany. Super short shift. It, Is it? it makes a massive, massive difference. But it's not a, it's not a sequential or anything? No, 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 it's, it's still a five. There's uh, a bit of spiker speed. going on there. Yeah. Isn't there? Yeah, I, 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 I love that exposed look of, of, of the linkages and things. It's good. Look, can I have a look, can we have a look at the engine? <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you come up with the ideas like, like the 911, like this, do you mastermind the, the restoration process or do you do some of it yourself or? I do as much as I can. Uh, I mean, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not, uh, I can't spray anything. Yeah. Um, so it's a case of researching the best people around the area. And I go speak to them and say, this is what, what you know, I show them the vision that I've got and say, this is, I, I source all the pieces, all the parts from everywhere. Um, uh, but I'll, I will do as much as I can. I mean, when we came to spraying, he gave me the job of doing the, stri the stripe. What, you masked it <laughs> yeah, up? Yeah. Really? He says, you've done it there as well. I've just yeah, noticed that. And then under there. God, you've, the detail is really high. And in there. And in there. <laughs> so on the front valance. I'm just looking at the underneath because uh, that's the sign of a true fastidious restoration. Uh -huh. There's colour coding <coughs> and painted surfaces underneath. This is, this is lovely, Richard. Yeah. The thing is, I drive these. Yeah, uh, um, and we we drive. I drive all over the country. We did London to Brighton, in it as well. Yeah, um, I'm glad you use the cars. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people that kind of, you know, I would I don't know. I wouldn't call you a car collector as such, but some people have them as just ornaments. Yeah, I know they're in this surrounding, which is sort of all, quite quite glorious, and it's your sort of area, your shrine. Mm -hmm. But you do actually get these out and use them. Yes. No, they definitely do. I've seen the Lambo in the rain. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've got to go and look at the Lamborghini. Okay. Well, the Merchilago. It's the Lamborghini that 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 never stops looking impressive, does it? No, no. It's a nice, clean, 
pure lines, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, when I was growing up, the Diablo was, was the Lamborghini of the time, and yeah. it was a Diablo and the F40. Um, and uh, yeah, this came along. It was quite a bit different to Diablo, although it shares, still shares a lot of components from, yeah. from it. Um, I think it's a far better looking car than the Diablo. I kind of feel like this is aging better. Yes, it seems more in proportion front and back, it, I think. Exactly, especially yeah. the, the, the rear end of the Diablo or, or the side profile is a bit... Yeah, really skinny at the front. It's a bit odd, yeah. yeah. You don't just wake up and buy a no, Lamborghini, I no, don't think. No, but it's always one of those things, one day I will own a Lamborghini. I want to own a Lamborghini. Yeah. And I think these were, and still are, I think, undervalued. I think yeah. the, probably Diablos are more expensive I think they are. than these. Um, but for me, again, it was a, a classic, a good blend of old and new. Yeah. So you've got a newer, you know, more comfortable, you know, you haven't got heavy steering and all that sort of thing, but you've still got the old V12. Yeah. Um, six and a half litre, 640 brake horsepower uh, engine. Yeah. But it's a proper, true V12 Lamborghini engine. and. Horse, the scissor doors. Wow. So did you, because this was your first kind of sports car, yep. you're saying. Was, what was your first supercar? Was this your first supercar? No, I'd say the R8. The yep. Audi R8 was, was probably the first supercar. Yeah. Um, after, after that, my, my first 911, I, I got a 993, 996. 997, 991. Okay. And then went back. Oh, did you? Because yeah, right. you sort of got further and further away from, you know, the enjoyment of it. So, so I was kind of evolved with this from the R8, um, the Gallardo, I had a Gallardo Spider manual. Um, you had a manual Gallardo? Mm, yeah. That's which, a bit of a rare group. It's another one of those ones you just wish you kept. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they the did values. not make many, did they? No, no, no. So was the was the Merchant Largo in this condition when you got it? Have you done anything to it? Yeah, no, it's, it was in it was in really good condition. It only done nine thousand miles. Is that all? Yeah, that's all it had done. It's done fifteen thousand now. Okay. <laughs> so again, uh, I do drive. You have because a lot of people would have left it at under, under ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, but you you're not scared, yeah. which I'm really no. pleased about. No. What what are your family like? Is this just is this a you thing, or is it? In, yeah, my immediate family. Yeah, really. Um, my dad was heavily into cars, uh, which is obviously where, where it came is from. Is it his fault that you have it this is, cave? It is his fault, yeah. I should make him pay the rent. I was going, well, well, well he, he, look, he puts his Harley Davidson <laughs> yes, now. Yeah, Notice yeah, that's, that, that's it, my brother and my, yeah, they get, they get use of it as well. The minor services have been fine. Uh, we do take him to Lamborghini. You do? To have done. Yep. Yeah. Um, again, that helps the stamps and the book and everything. Yeah. So a minor service, a thousand, fifteen hundred quid. Okay. Which is still a lot for an oil change. <laughs> and an air filter, yeah. two air filters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to clutch changes and stuff like that, the last service I had done was a clutch. Because this is a paddle shift car, yes. isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and each time you go for a service, they give you a percentage reading on the clutch. How oh. much is left? Oh, do they? So Just you have like a countdown. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know if I want that. And it, and it got to 85% worn, uh, even with only 15,000 miles. Um, wow, okay. So it's a case of, yeah. And then a, I think it was about 14,000 pound bill. One thing I was going to ask you, well, let's just put the lid down, but are, are all of these keepers, because you have sold a couple in the last few months, yeah. Do you kind of, is it like a crop rotation thing? A car hits the spot and you go, that's cool, I've owned it a yep. while. It's time for that one to go. I've got my eye on something else. Yeah, or... yeah there are one or two like that, um, but there's definitely some keepers. So the Porsche, the Mini, the Ferrari. Keepers. And, and the Spiker keepers, yeah. We've got to talk about the Spiker, Richard, because the Spiker is not a car that you <clears> see ev every day. I've never actually met a Spiker owner. Uh, okay. There's not many of us, but it turns out, I think last year, 
Well, I think last year they declared in around March time they've definitely gone bankrupt. Yeah. And then towards the end of the year they said we're back again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the the plan is to build a factory in Germany, and they're building a showroom in Monaco, I think now. So. You had a Carver, that, that crazy three-wheeler with the Daihatsu engine, and that is made in the Netherlands, weren't they? Yes. Uh -huh. This was made in the Netherlands, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So you like uh -huh. your Dutch weird stuff. <laughs> so tell me, how did one of these arrive in your cave? Because what a, what a car. Probably 2002 was on Top Gear, and I remember thinking, never seen anything like that before. No. Um, Very much no. And it's pretty spectacular in all its details and everything and yeah uh, it, I mean it was at, around the time of the Ferrari 360 I think and that's what it was competing with and the Ferrari 360 was a much much better car all yeah. round they'd say but for me it was more you know it's looking the, at it, the details it's the detail and, the minutiae of this yeah because yeah. this predates anything Pagani doesn't it yeah yeah exactly I mean when when people look at the interior they think oh that's like a Pagani as if Spiker copied them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so there are two versions, the Spider, obviously, which is a convertible. Yeah. And then this is, this is the hard top, effectively, uh, which is even rarer. I think they made about 250 of these all together. Is that all? 200 were, were Spiders and 50 were the hard top. And how many right-hand drive? Poof, you count on one hand, maybe, two hands. Can't be many. Yeah, a few years ago, one came up for sale and um, it was a Spider. And at the time, I had a TVR, um, Tuscan. And that kind of put me off hand-built specialist. Small cars. volume, yes. slightly strange cars. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it was about £90,000 at the time when I saw it. And I thought, it's just too much of a risk. Um, and then I actually owned a, a Morgan Aero 8. Did you? And that sort of changed my opinion on that because that was so well built yeah it was it's it, um, interesting it drove really well yeah no squeaks and rattles all the electrics worked German um, engine yes it had a BMW engine that's it has right. the BM, yeah. BMV8 yeah. yeah yeah so I thought mm, maybe 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 it is worth a go at these uh, but it, in that time the prices of these doubled oh yeah <laughs> I was going to say 90 grand sounds yeah, cheap, doesn't it? Because I can't remember what these were when they were new, but obviously they were a very unusual exotic. Yeah, I think they were about 180,000 new. Okay. You know, that's back in the early 2000s. So. Which is an awful lot. Yeah, yeah. So you had to be pretty crazy committed. to buy one of these. <laughs> committed. <laughs> yeah. It's never too crazy. It's committed. Um, and then one of the dealerships I was working with took it in part exchange and when part exchanged it for a brand new Aston Martin. Um, oh, so through your work, you saw it come yeah, up? Yeah, uh-huh. Um, By the way, someone is outside throwing washing machines around. If you can hear, <laughs> yes. if you can hear pure destruction, it's not a car accident. It's someone in the training estate, I don't know, destroying washing machines or something. <laughs> and so yeah, so I, so I saw it. They, they put it up, they advertised it. Um, I had a McLaren. Um, 12C. 12C. Out of all the cars, it was the fastest, the best handling, yeah, and all that sort of thing. But it just still left me feeling a bit cold. Did it? Yeah, yeah. So McLaren I, for one year. Yeah, that's gone. That went, um, and so I sold that, and I and and I bought this instead. Right. Great decision. <laughs> this is everything I wanted the McLaren to be. These were Audi V8. Yep, so 4.2 V8. Yeah. Um, so it could be the R8 engine. This predates the R8. Yeah, it does. So. By quite a few years. Mm. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, because I wonder if Audi went, oh, this is not a bad <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah. We use a V8, yeah. we've got a few of those. It is bonkers with detail, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh -huh. I don't even know how you get into a Spiker. I've never, I've never driven one. I've never, I've never <laughs> experienced one, actually. How do you get in it, Richard? So, on the um, wing mirror. Oh, is it one of these yeah, jobs? so on the inside. Yeah. That's it. And then just lift it up. So, yeah, press the button. Is it a double push? That's it. Oh. 
Another scissor. You've got two <laughs> scissor door cars. Or, or you can do that. Oh, come on. <laughs> but like I say, I mean, you look at the interior, there's, there's no plastic at all. No. Only on the seat belt, which I think is probably just a legal requirement. It's just leather, but leather. and aluminium, yeah. engine turned aluminium. Yeah, every single detail. Three five five. It's weird. I I never used to be bothered about these, and I'm, I don't know whether it's me getting a bit older or what. But in the last couple of years, these and the Testarossas, I've kept. I've looked at them in a different way, and I've gone. Mm. I do appreciate them more mm. now. So it's got such a unique sound because they, they rev up to nine. 9,000 RPM. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just a unique sound to this and it's quite high pitched. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Two things I like here. It's not red. Yeah, I didn't want a red one. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I've never particularly liked red cars. And I, mm -hmm. I, if I ever owned a Ferrari, I would never own a red one. Uh -huh. And it's a three pedal car. Yes. Uh -huh. Nice. And left hand drive this left one. Left hand drive. Me and my dad went, uh, to watch Le Mans for the first time um, in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the year Porsche won back the title after so many years. It was, it was, it was a really good event. And we, th and we went, we actually went with Porsche in convoy, so there's a few other Porsches. Um, Dad had a 991 at the time, so we both went in that. So on the way back, we went via Germany. Of, of course she did, <laughs> of course she did. Via Frankfurt. Uh, we had a couple lined up. This was the first one we saw. And um, yeah, we, 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 we bought it. One of, the, one of the big worries was the drive home because obviously it's, in, it's a car, it's a Ferrari. It's probably a bit <laughs> fragile, maybe. 700 mile drive. It was overdue a belt service. What? It was <laughs> overdue a belt service and you did a 700 mile trip? It didn't have its tool kit, so it didn't have its tow, towing eye or anything. What? So we thought it was a bit of a gamble. And you just decided to do it? Uh, Faultless, absolutely faultless. I don't know what's the mileage of this. Is this pretty low? So mileage? it's a well used one, um, 80,000 kilometers. Wow. Yeah, so we bought it with 60 something. Okay. Um, which is a, quite a lot for these. Yeah. Uh, when we brought it back, we got it booked in straight with Ferrari to do the belt change, um, to get everything done right. Obviously with these, it's an engine out job. It is. Um, so it's about five grand, I think, to do that. Okay. But you'd um, factored that in, I guess, yes, with the... Yeah, exactly. I mean, out of all the cars, if I just want to go for a drive, it would probably just be this one. Is it really? Mm. I mean, it's in, it's in really good condition. You can see there's a few little blemishes on the paint, yeah. but I mean, is this an original paint car? It's original, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's sort got, of weathering nicely. It's got lots of squirrels on it. I yeah. mean, there's, there's, there's Italian fag burns in the, in, the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in, the, in the carpets, but it's all part, part of the charm, really. Just before we started filming, he said, that's the best view, the back of the 355. And I said, it is, isn't it? That's my favorite view of these. And he said, that's why this is the only one that's parked nose into the garage. Everything else <laughs> is facing out. Yeah. This, is, this is nose to the wall. It's because it's all about the back end, right? Yes. Okay, Richard, Elise. Now, these are 25 years old now, aren't they? Can't yes, believe it's come around. I know. I remember when they first came out, it was such a, a cool car. Yeah. You know, the best handling. Yeah. It was super light, super nimble, and everyone just raved about them, didn't they? Yeah. It was the benchmark of a handling, the best handling car at the time. It was, it was. Um, has this always been on the list? Have kind you... of in the back. Um, the real reason for buying it is me and my dad were going to um, do more track work. Yeah. So obviously driving these sort of things, it's um, get a bit more experience on the track. Yeah, bought the wheels, like I say, but we've never put them on. And we just think, yeah, it's just too nice to be doing that now. You need to, buy, really, you need to buy a nasty one for track. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But even those are still big money now, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, you got yeah. another 911. Uh, we've had to just move the Lotus out and put this 911 in because we, we're a bit tight on space for filming because Richard's cave is packed. 
with machinery, which is the way a cave should be, I yeah. believe. Yeah. So another air cooled 911. Yes, uh -huh. so probably the less desirable one being the convertible. Yeah. But the plan with this one is, is to build another 911 project, but a speedster version. Oh. Yeah. No, and it's very difficult to get parts. Um, I bet it is. But I've, I've managed to get the screen, which is one of the hardest things to get because Porsche don't make them anymore. I got it shipped over from America and it actually turned up with a screen okay. Okay, that's <laughs> so good. It didn't break. It yeah. didn't break. And the roof components are, uh, they're really difficult to get hold of, but I managed to get an aftermarket hardtop. Yeah. But one thing I didn't like about the 964 version of the Speedster was uh, they were all narrow bodied. Yeah. So they didn't look they didn't quite look right. Kind of yeah, like exactly. Hunk hunkered down exactly. enough. So this is all going to come to pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll get stripped, engine rebuilt, and and everything. Totally new interior. This has only done fifty thousand miles. This one has it. And it's a, a nineteen ninety. But because it's been modified already, I don't feel too bad about modifying yeah. it even more. Yeah. But so this is a project in the making. Yeah. And I know we need to just have a little bit of a conversation about the first car I saw when I turned up which is the Defender Ambulance. So let's uh -huh. have a quick look at that. Yes. What's the story with this ex-ambulance, Richard? Okay. What's, your, what's your thinking here? Well, I mean, I've tried a few different types of vehicles in terms of a motorhome, a converted van, but no, nothing really sort of hit the spot in terms of did everything I wanted. Yeah. Um, and I did come across one of these on eBay. Oh no! I know it's and oh, I thought, no. actually, um, if I could, yeah, create my perfect interior configuration, I can do up the outside so it looks a bit more beefy, and I do like the look of the Defenders. Um, it's, so you, you're, this is going to be a motorhome. Yes, yes. This so is... we'll go camping in it. The idea is to have like a pop-up roof so you can sleep up there. Um, I wanted somewhere you could also store the bikes inside yeah. rather than, than outside. Um, so hopefully it should sleep three because this has only done 14,000 miles. This is an insulated box, yes, right? Yes, yeah, but it's all insulated already. It's got all the electrics back there. Um, you know, so it's a real good starting point. This is great. I think you've got more than one of these because <laughs> yeah. when he emailed me, he says, well, I've I've been working on it on one and then I've got another one. So have you got two? Yes. The guy that I bought it from <laughs> let me know. He said, oh, I might, I might have another I might one have as another well. one. Yeah. So I thought, well, it I've might got... actually be a good idea to convert, well, convert them both, yeah. keep one, sell the other one. Before I left, I had to take one car out for a drive and that will be the car caves way. And of course, it was always gonna be the Space Age Spiker. And that is the next video that you can watch. I wanna say a big thank you to Richard for letting me into his little car cave. And I want to say a huge thank you to EBC Brakes for sponsoring the car cave series. There is a discount code that you can get 15% off everything. And I will put that in the description below. Thanks to everybody who's watched this. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, go on, subscribe.